when you lay down your life and you pick up the cross and you follow Jesus, then you are worthy to receive a revelation. You will receive that which will give you purpose and life, that which will give you true joy and peace, that which will give you what you need. You need God. He is the only one that can satisfy your soul. Money will never satisfy your soul. Entertainment will never satisfy your soul. What shall a profit a man if he gains the whole world and then he loses his soul? Why are you never satisfied? Why are you never content? Why do you have to run after the, the things of the world and all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life? When Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the God-man, took the punishment of your sins that you might have abundant life. Oh, what is that? What is abundant life? It's, a, it's above life. And that it comes. It only comes through Jesus Christ when you are born again. When you have been transformed. It's called conversion. When, you, when regeneration has taken place by the washing and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It's not according to your works. It's according to His mercy. God is merciful. And His mercy is extended out to you today. Through the preaching of the gospel. God's news. God's good news. It's good news. Gospel means good news. It's God's news that you might hear the truth that your sins can be blotted out. And you can receive the refreshing from the presence of God when you are converted. When you are changed, transformed, renewed. Oh, your mind is renewed. No longer are you tormented by the condemnation. No longer are you tormented by the guilt, the pain, the suffering, the loneliness, the insecurity, the emptiness, the vanity of life, the meaninglessness of life. Oh, what is the meaning of life? Another outfit, tighter jeans, better boots? Huh? What's the meaning of life? What is the meaning as you, you scratch and bite and gnaw and everything to try to find that which will satisfy? But you can't get no satisfaction. Nothing satisfied. Vacation in the city, looking at the tall buildings, going to the museums, eating at the restaurant, never satisfied, never fulfilled, empty. It's empty. But when you look inside your heart and you realize that you, you are undone and unclean, and that all of your righteousness is filthy rags before a holy God. And you have nowhere to turn. You cannot turn to your wife or your kids for that satisfaction. You've exalted those things in your life thinking they bring you enjoyment, but it comes to not. It comes to emptiness. Will you come to Christ? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He will lead and guide you in the path of righteousness. He will show himself strong to you if you repent. You must repent. You cannot have a new hairdo and think you're okay. No, you come to God with a broken and a contrite heart. You humble yourself in repentance and confession of sin and you look to him who died for you. The source of all life and light and love. He is the source. Jesus Christ. Everything circles around him. He is the one that died before the foundation of the world. He was crucified before the foundation. That means that God, or God has decreed a purpose. And I'm excited because that decree, his plan, his purpose is being worked out in the sons of men. And it's all about Jesus Christ and the cross. Do you have any earplugs you could loan us? Oh, you need to hear this. You need to hear this. Near is the day of the Lord. Near and coming very quickly. People want earplugs? I'm telling you, in, the, in hell, when you hear the weeping and the wailing, when you hear the gnawing of the teeth, the screaming, the pain for all of eternity, as you are tormented, because every God stretched out his hand to you, that Jesus Christ wanted to forgive you and cleanse you and change you, but you wanted earplugs? You wanted earplugs? Now what I'm talking about is so glorious, words can't even describe when I'm talking about the revelation of his glory, the revelation of his beauty. That's what glory means. It's, it's, it's a word that is kind of like incomprehensible of God's beauty and wonder and majesty and splendor and color and perfection and what is pure. And I'm trying to describe it. 
him who is indescribable. That's why you need a revelation. And the cross is what brings the revelation. The cross broke through the veil, and now light shines. Light shines in a dark place. We're that light. We are shining. We are proclaiming that Christ has done this in our life. We have tasted it. We have experienced it. We bathe in his glory. We soak in his glory. We enjoy his presence because there's nothing else that satisfies. Money will never satisfy you. A bigger house will never satisfy you. A vacation to San Francisco will never satisfy. What's going to satisfy your soul? Having sex tonight? Looking at another porno flick? What's going to satisfy your soul? What is the meaning of life? Think about it, people. Think about it. Jesus Christ, the meaning. He is the way. You need to follow him. He is the truth. You need to believe in him. And he is the life, the center of life, the cross. The cross reveals the mind of God that he wants to make known to you his will. He, make, he wants to make known to you his heart, his mind, and he wants to know you. So what does he do? Oh, he brings out the gospel. He brings out the message. He brings out the cross. He brings out this to you. That faith would come by hearing. That God would do this resurrection power. The power that would raise you from the dead. That rose me from the dead. That rose me from the dead this morning. That continually raises me from the dead. Yes, me. Can you believe it? Me. I can't believe it. And that God would come to you. And when he comes to you and he gives you a revelation of his glory, you're going to say the same thing. Me? Why me? I'm a chief of all sinners. I'm a wretch. I'm undone. God, I have nothing to offer you. I have nothing to give to you. I have no education. I have no money. I, there's nothing in me that is worthy of you. And so he crucifies me. Oh, yes, I die that he may live. I die. You have to die. You have to die. You have to die to your selfishness. You have to die to all your greed and covetousness. You have to die to your self-will. You have to die to your kingdom, your government. You govern your life, you must die. If you do not die, you will not live. He who loves his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. I have died and I die daily. I die to my selfishness. I die to my pleasure. I die to my greed. I die to my lust. And then what happens when you die? Life comes. A revelation comes. He illuminates. He allows you to see his glory. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that which is vile in the sight of God. Oh, you know. You know when I'm talking about your conscience bears witness that a woman should kiss another woman. Your conscience bears witness that a woman was not created for another woman to do that which is kinky and perverted and ungodly and twisted and secret. And then you come outside. And you come outside in the midst of public for the praise of men, the recognition of men, because your conscience cries out, guilty, guilty, guilty. You're condemned because you know you're not supposed to be kissing another woman. You know those filthy dreams that run through your mind are no good, and they torment you, and you can't handle it because the glory of God is here. The glory of God is here, and it's affecting you. Oh, I get excited. I get excited when the glory of God comes. Because when the glory of Christ comes, all oh, people are changed. People are changed by the power of the Holy Spirit that has come to reveal to you your sin. Your sin. Oh, that which you have done. Oh, he brings that which you need. And that is his love, his mercy, his goodness, his kindness. I can talk about it because I've experienced it. I've tasted it. I walk in it. And what is the evidence of that? Oh, life. And what is life? Oh, him. Walking with him. Enjoying him. Taking pleasure in him. Glorifying him. See, man will glorify that which he enjoys. Now, some people glorify marijuana because they enjoy it. That's you. You enjoy marijuana because it makes you feel good. 
Oh, you love the thrill. You love the feeling the, that all that it, marijuana gives you. So you glorify it. You think about it. You praise it. You lift it up. Oh, you say, everyone, you want to smoke marijuana every day because you don't know Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ, he would be the center. Jesus Christ would be the one that provides and satisfies and redeems and sets you free. Not 